going to be learning about distance on the coordinate plane. Our I can statement is I can compute the length of horizontal and vertical line segments with integer coordinates for endpoints in the coordinate plane by using absolute value to count the number of units between the endpoints. So remember horizontal, our base word is horizon from left to right, and vertical means you're up and down. So here's our problem we're going to be focusing on. Four friends are touring on motorcycles. They come to an intersection of two roads. The road they are on continues straight and the other is perpendicular. So perpendicular means they're intersecting at that 90 degree angles. So you could fit a piece of paper right in the corner. The sign at the intersection shows the distances to several towns. Our sign is at the bottom. Draw a map or diagram of the roads and use it and the information on the sign to answer the following questions. We'll be looking at these three questions individually by themselves. Our first question is, what is the distance between Albertsville and Dewey Falls? The second question is, what is the distance between Blossville and Cheyenne? And the third question is, on the coordinate plane, what represents the intersection of the two roads? So our first one we're going to focus on is what is the distance between Albertsville and Dewey Falls? So Albertsville, I see, is eight miles to the left. Remember, when we are talking distance, we always start at zero. If we are unsure, and it's telling me I'm going eight miles to the left. So I'm at my sign, and it tells me it is eight miles to the left. That is the direction my arrow points, so it's going to be a negative number. The second part says, where is Dewey Falls? I see Dewey Falls is to the right, and it is six miles. How can I figure out the distance between these two? So remember, distance, I'm counting and finding how far apart they are. So one way, so I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I know this direction is one, two, three, four, five, six. So then I can just add these two together. Eight plus six equals 14. I'm going to check my work with our answer key. And look at that. We have a length of 14. It says Albertsville is eight miles to the left, which we showed with the red line. And Dewey Falls is six miles to the right, which we showed with the blue line. Since the towns are in opposite directions from the intersection, their distances must be combined. Combined meaning we are adding them. So we add that 8 plus 6, and we see it is 14. So it looks like we have that first problem done. We're going to go to the second part. What is the distance between Blossville and Cheyenne? First thing I want you to note is we have a vertical number line. Vertical meaning up and down. Why do you think we chose our vertical number line? If we look over at our two towns we're looking at, we see the direction that the arrows point are up or north. So I know that my direction is going to be going up and down as well. So I'm going to start. Remember, I'm going to be at zero. And it tells me that Blossville is that three miles away. So I'm going to plot one, two, three. I see my second town at Cheyenne is 12 miles away from where I am. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I plot it. I'm going to reread my question and find out what is it asking. What is the distance between Blossville and Cheyenne? So I'm going to notice I have a distance of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I believe my distance is nine units. I can also check. I know that this is 12 miles away. And I know that I am three miles away from Blossville. So I can ask myself a part, part, whole being three 
from that orange line plus this mystery number part. I'm going to put a box. Later we will be using variables. So 3 plus that mystery box equals 12. And I know that 9 fills this mystery box in perfectly. The next part of our question, the third part, was on the coordinate plane, what represents the intersection of the two, of the two roads? So if I'm thinking I'm driving, I'm driving along, and then I come to that intersection, that 90 degree angle, what would this be right here? My car is stopped right at that intersection where they cross. I see that's going to be the midpoint where my roads intersect. And then I have a map that lays out all of my towns. Blossville, Cheyenne. You'll notice Cheyenne is off my grid. I could have made it so that each one was counting by twos. So it'd be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And then Cheyenne could have fit. But just for illustration, because we aren't working on scaling, I left it as one unit. All right, so now we're going to go from a real-world problem to a normal problem. So we're focusing on this new question. What is the distance between negative 4, 0 and 5, 0? Before we start, though, I want you to notice, what do these ordered pairs have in common? And what does that mean about their location on the coordinate plane? The first thing I notice for myself is they both share the same y-coordinate. What that means, since they're sharing the same y-coordinate, they're going to be on the same horizontal line because they're not moving up or down. In fact, they're going to stay on the x-axis because they aren't moving up and down. My first step, I want to plot them. So I see that negative 4, comma 0 is 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to put that dot there and label it. It's not moving up because it has that 0 for its y-coordinate. And then 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, comma 0. Again, it's not moving up because of that y-coordinate. And now I'm going to check. Can easily count the distance or the space between them. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I could break it down as 4 plus 5 equals 9, or just count total 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Either way, I get that 9 for my answer. However, we're going to learn another way that we can check it. So my first part, how do we find the distance between two numbers on a number line? We can also calculate their absolute values. So their absolute values, I'm going to check. And I see, again, my dots are right here. And right here, I see that there's a negative 4 and a positive 5. Since they're in opposite quadrants, I'm doing a part plus a part. The absolute value of negative 4, that negative is coming from my x value, plus the absolute value of this 5, because it has been moved 5 units. We remember that the absolute value are all positive numbers, so I'm taking that 4 out and making it positive. 4 plus 5 equals 9. I can check, and I see that, yes, that 9 is the same as when I counted. So we have two ways, absolute value and by counting. Part 2, we can check, and just to make sure that there are no mistakes, we see it has the same part. The absolute value of negative 4 equals 4. The absolute value of negative 5 equals 5. Oops, there's my mistake. That should be a positive. The absolute value of positive 5 is 5. And there's the exact same equation we had. OK, we're going to do two more examples. The first one is asking me, what is a line segment's length if it is 0, 6? So 0, I'm not moving left or right but I'm going down to that negative 6, and 0, comma, negative 9. So I'm going down to that negative 9 spot. I'm going to label. And there we go. Before we begin, though, I want to look. What do I notice about the endpoints? What do they have in common? So I notice it's the very similar 
except now it's the y, or the x instead of the y that they have in common. So now I'm going to check, what is their distance apart? One, two, three. I have three units when I count. Very easy, very basic. They're just three units away from each other. I'm going to check my work. This is the exact same question, only now it wants me to use the absolute value. So I'm going to plot them again. Negative six, negative nine. I'm going to label them just so I don't forget. Remember, I had three for my last answer, so I'm just checking it. My absolute value, I see my y coordinates are different, so those are going to be the ones I'm going to be using. Take the absolute value of negative nine, and I'm going to draw my length. That's how long I have. And here's my negative six. I have a part, a part, and a whole. So I can set it up as negative 9 equals my two parts, being the absolute value of negative 6, plus my mystery box. Or I can set it up so I can isolate that variable as the absolute value of negative 9 minus the absolute value of negative 6, and that will give me an absolute value of 9 minus 6 equals 3. Does my answer check out? I'm going to look. There's my 3 from before. There's my 3 from now. Our very last one, then we're going to be finished. I'm plotting negative 3 comma 3. So I'm going over negative 3 and up 3. Again, I'm going to label it. And then I have my second ordered pair. Negative 3, comma, negative 5. I'm going to label it. I'm going to check my work first. 1, 2, 3. Then I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I have a 3 over here, 5 over here. I know that 3 plus 5 equals 8. I'm going to check it now using my absolute value. I know my answer should be 8 because I checked it using my very easy counting method. Here, I notice that my x coordinates are the same. So I'm going to be using my y's for my absolute value. I have the absolute value of 3 plus the absolute value of negative 5 equals I know that the absolute value of 3 plus the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. I know that will equal 8. And look, it checks out.